So how come beliefs have so much power over us? Well, here's the answer. Hi there, I'm Annie Catronomas and I'm occasionally awake. I'm here to help you inspire your awakenings, heal yourself and reawaken your life. Welcome and welcome back to my channel. Beliefs create and beliefs destroy. That's a quote by Tony Robbins. But how do they do that? How come beliefs have so much invisible power over us? Beliefs influence our decisions, the grandiosity of our vision, the depth of our fears. They are an important puzzle piece in how our values are formed, in what kind of relationships we attract, in what we settle for, in what we dare to try, and in what we have predefined as being too far stretched from our perceived reality to even try. So how come beliefs have so much power over us? Well, here's the answer. Beliefs repeat. They keep repeating an old story we've been believing for quite some time. And beliefs can even go completely unnoticed at a conscious level because they tend to mask as the world around us already manifested. It is a common misconception that it's the other way around, that beliefs are formed based on our reality. This is both kind of accurate and totally insufficient in understanding the complex dynamics of beliefs. Well, first, let me say that beliefs never come singly. They come embedded in a complex system, in a net of intertwined beliefs that sustain and uphold each other. Together, these beliefs create our logic, our worldview, the frame for our mental horizon and for our comfort zone and for our agency, meaning the scope of action that we grant ourselves based on those beliefs. So in short, a belief system represents an inner logic, the inner logic of our identity configuration. Our belief system, especially those first seed or core beliefs, are made of family rules. That's a term coined by Virginia Satir, as well as by the cultural and social norms and standards that we grew up to internalize as being the way things are and are supposed to be. Those core beliefs of family rules represent how we learned to establish the greatest level of love, appreciation, worth and safety in our surroundings growing up. Because children always eventually experience their surroundings as being conditional. So core beliefs or family rules do have a very important function because as children, in the phase where we form them, they actually are the means by which we can actively participate in creating a reality that displays and reflects to us the greatest level of love, appreciation, worth and safety. The bad news is some beliefs can have an especially tight grip on us over decades, long after we moved out, long after we began to become the protagonists of our own life story, more actively being able to create our surroundings ourselves. Some of our most internalized beliefs can be rather difficult to transform because they tend to hide behind necessities, behind the obvious, behind what's logical and what's safe. And a lot of people don't even dare to argue with safety. Your own risk assessment might feel totally objective and universal in its security claim, but maybe it's not. Maybe all those reckless people around you who don't stick to the implicit rules of safety are not that reckless after all. Maybe all they have is a very different, personalized to their life experience, internalized belief system. Rules of their own. I'm so glad you're here right now. So if you enjoy this, please make sure to like and subscribe to become occasionally awake with me. So I want to invite you to become curious about your own internalized beliefs. Beliefs can come in many shapes and forms. Maybe you believe that flying is dangerous, that sugar is going to kill you, that you can't make a living creating art, that you are not worthy of love. Where do you hold your strongest beliefs? Which people or experiences do you avoid because you know it's the right, the obvious thing to do? We avoid experiences according to our internalized and often unconscious beliefs about safe versus unsafe behavior. We might deny ourselves the most amazing and adventurous holiday and cultural experiences because we are sure that plane would crash. We might treat regular cookies like the plague or stick with a 9-to-5 job and leaving our beloved art gaining dust in the corner. The most powerful way to reveal and understand our beliefs is through knowledge awakenings. 
Sudden insights and aha moments might happen related to our ego identity, meaning the configuration of our belief system. This relates mainly to the family rules that we internalized in childhood and youth. Or awakening moments and epiphanies might occur regarding our participation in and dependence on the social and cultural matrix around us. A knowledge awakening is a sudden shift in perspective and in perception. We wake up to a particular belief in this case and for the first time we see beyond the illusion and onto the truth and the context of the matter. We realize our self-made limitations and we realize the implicit sense in our thoughts and actions that we didn't see before. Through our enhanced understanding, we then gain a greater sense of self-compassion to meet our own logic with more love and gentleness. And whatever part of us is met with love and gentleness begins to loosen its grip on us. I said the bad news is that the power of our beliefs over our lives can be so strong and persisting. But don't worry, there's some good news too. The good news is that once the first beliefs of ours are disentangled from our belief system, a potential rippling effect is created and the configurational pillars of our logic come tumbling down. Once the first domino falls and we get to question the objectivity of our own logic and our safety claims, we can extend that newfound openness and clarity to other beliefs. It becomes easier to look beyond the meaning we've associated to a belief and see it for what it is. A mental creation based on past experience that used to be accurate in its original context that has however been taken beyond that original context and now continues to influence our present and future experience, if we let it. Not only is it important or helpful to investigate how a certain belief was formed in our past based in its original context, but also how that belief was taken out of context, possibly generalized to include other contexts in a way that influences our present experience and the potential future experience we are currently beginning to create for ourselves. From that new level of awareness, it becomes a conscious choice for us to either keep or modify a belief. Please note that I said modify, I did not say delete, erase, get rid of a belief from our consciousness. It's not the point to try to delete something that has been imprinted in our system as a logical and habitualized pattern of reference. The idea of having to delete a disruptive element is loaded with rejection and effort and resistance. That's essentially an act of fighting against something, of pushing something away. However, the answer never is to fight against our beliefs, our inner parts, our reality. The answer is to investigate, understand, meet with compassion and gently transform those beliefs, those parts. And it's also the same principle in different contexts. Never fighting against, never pushing away, but integrating what is from a place of love, compassion and gentleness. Any belief that is dominant in its negative and limiting expression can be examined and questioned. It can be evaluated according to its meaning and relevance in our current life setup. Here are a few questions you might want to ask yourself in order to take a look at your own beliefs. One basic question is, what do I believe to be true about X? Then simply replace the X with a concept, a norm, a societal rule or an ideal life standard. For example, you might want to ask yourself the question, what do I believe to be true about having a family? What do I believe to be true about working a nine to five? What do I believe to be true about long-term relationships? What do I believe to be true about aging? I suggest embedding this question in a free writing exercise to access your subconscious and to possibly gain some deep insights into your core beliefs. Start the following sentence and without thinking, without minding perfect sentence structure or grammar or spelling, just keep writing and allow yourself to be surprised by your own answers. Start with the words, what I believe to be true about X is that, and then finish the sentence with whatever comes to mind. You could also experiment with these beginnings. I believe that in order to have or do X, I would, should, could, have to, and then finish the sentence. Here are two more ideas for writing or thinking prompts. I believe that X should or could be, and then finish the sentence. I believe that aging should be avoided or normalized or depicted more diversely in the media. 
I believe that in order to have a family, I would have to heal all my trauma first. Or I should pay off my debt first and buy a house. Or another sentence you might want to experiment with is in order to be X and then insert an adjective. For example, in order to be good enough or in order to be successful, I would have to and then finish the sentence. So these were a few writing and thinking prompts that you might want to use in order to take a look at your own beliefs. How you can meet them with more love and compassion, understand their original context from which they came and look at how you want to consciously modify them in a way that makes them beneficial for your present life experience and for your future. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this, please like and subscribe. This video is related to the awakening to the ego self. If you want more insights on the four types of awakenings and how to experience them in your life occasionally, visit me at occasionallyawake.com to inspire your awakenings.